Hello, hello. We've got a new chapter of One Piece. Uh, this is 1126 Settling the Score. Uh, we continue our journey of Yamato exploring all of Wano in the style of his idol Odin. Uh, before also hopefully emulating Odin and heading out to sea, I want to see Yamato involved again in the main plot in some capacity. That sounds fun. Uh, here he's going to a soba stall, gobbling up some soba. Sounds like another mystery is unfolding. Uh, girls from this soba shop in Kurdi have gone missing. Uh, Yamato, of course, I think is going to get to the bottom of this. I said this already, but I appreciate that like Wayno has not turned into a total utopia of endless reverie and bliss and uh, food and everything overnight. Instead, it is still very much uh, a country of conflict, a country of strife. Things have certainly improved, but they're not perfect. There's still a lot of work for Momotaro to do. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's I, I think that's interesting, and that kind of feels more realistic and kind of makes it more interesting to kind of think of Wano ongoing as we have other adventures. Anyways, what's going to happen in this chapter? I have no freaking clue. I kind of doubt that we're going to get to Elbaf already. Uh, I think we're still going to do be, be doing some checking-ins. There's still a lot of people to kind of see their reaction to Vegapunk's transmission. Uh, last time we were checking in with the revolutionaries. Uh, we left it with a scene uh, with Dragon that seemed quite poignant. Uh, we could kind of dive more into that, uh, learn a little bit more about the revolutionaries' plans for the next events. Uh, we peeked into Marijua, we saw that the famine there had really uh, started to take its toll, albeit in really insignificant and cruel ways where none of the nobles are anywhere near starving, but all of the work staff are starving, but, you know... The dam is starting to burst, and we can see how very easily this is going to lead to horrible, horrible ramifications for them, you know, if all their servants starve to death. So yeah, it'll be uh, interesting to see kind of what other slices of the world we get. Um, right now, it feels like Elbaf is fairly light on plot elements. You know, we're going to see Jaguar de Sol, which will be obviously a huge moment of catharsis for Robin. That's going to be beautiful. Uh, we're going to have some fun adventures on the Land of Giants, I certainly hope. Going to meet some other notable giants that have kind of been hinted at throughout the series, maybe. Uh, and, of course, we're going to have another opportunity to learn some pretty major lore as we investigate the saved books from Ohana. Uh, so that's all well and good, but it's like, what's the conflict? Uh, what problem will be encountered here on Elbath, if any. It could just kind of be a quick stopover, but I feel like there is going to be some sort of showdown. Who is that silhouetted figure that's waiting for them and having a drink? Is it Shanks? Is it some other booze hound? Uh, I feel like there's going to be at least more kind of one more card played from the hand. Uh, one more element will get introduced. And my guess is that it might be Edward Veeble, uh, if you remember that guy who is the son of the original Stussy, not the clone Stussy, and claims to be the son of Whitebeard as well. Uh, I think, you know, we haven't seen him in a while. We don't know what he's up to. We know he's hell-bent on tracking down former Whitebeard pirates and killing them. So it could be that maybe we run into Marco on this island as well or something, and that precipitates the showdown. Uh, but he's kind of a wild card, and I feel like this is a good opportunity for him, because I think in Elbaf there's going to be this feeling of overwhelming brute strength, and that kind of seems like the type of character he is. Uh, and I don't know, I'm excited for that character to come and do more stuff. I think he's very funny conceptually. I like that he just looks like, like discount Whitebeard at home. <laughs> uh, let's punch into the chapter, though. Because, yeah, I think we're, maybe in this one we're going to finish up our little tour around the world and set up a couple more things that are going to crop up in Elbaf before we rejoin the Straw Hats sailing over that way. Oh, wait, oh, maybe we're right on the road to Elbaf already. The the party continues. I'm going to glimpse over cabin, so we headed for a little garden. Been a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, they kept fighting. They broke their weapons and punched each other. 
And then we had to prop finish a proper duel is death. And they had to put a stop to it. And we made our way together back to Elbath to get new weapons. They still got to keep fighting. <laughs> Whoa, it's absinthe. What the hell? Normally One Piece has like kind of crazy fantasy, you know, One Piece exclusive versions of, of famous food and drink. You know, the elephant fish and stuff. <laughs> Bink's brew. Uh, but no, absinthe, that's very real. I've, I've drank that before. <laughs> uh, the, the idea that it can make you hallucinate is pretty much entirely fiction. But it's a very long prevalent fiction that pops up in the works of Oscar Wilde and Joyce. Um, there are people that claim, oh, it's because the wormwood is like infused in it. And Wormwood has a, hallucinary, a hallucinatory compound in it. It's not true. <laughs> it's just really, really, really strong. So you get way drunker than you think you're going to get. And you get so drunk that you feel like you're seeing things because the room is spinning. <laughs> and uh, you can't parse like what you're seeing very well. Um, but no, it's not like magical. It's not really anything different. I like that Sanji can appreciate it though. Sanji is kind of an Oscar Wilde type in his own way, in a very hetero way. <laughs> oh, but I love this. Now that uh, they understand that Vegapunk will live on in his own way, they can enjoy this party together. Bonnie and Kuma, the horizon at sea. I love the little thousand sunny tugging along the giant's ship. It's so cool. It's just the catharsis of One Piece. You know, the feeling of introducing these giant pirates, and they're so awesome, and you want to see more of them. The holding off for so long, and then it's not like they're just back, but you get to see them fight. You get to see their culture. You get to see their crew. You get to just enjoy the massiveness of their, their ship and everything they do. Oh, it's so great. Oh, okay. So, that was a little slice of what's happening there. And I was like, wow, are we just sailing straight for Elbaf and the Elbaf arc is starting? But no, 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 no. We're going to intercut this with our, our continued news around the world investigations. Okay, one month earlier, at the island of Gartel in the New World, an incident occurred. Ah, yeah, yeah. We saw this. We saw this happen very, very briefly. And it was kind of like, hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, Luffy's actually kind of cool with those guys. You don't have to do that, man. <laughs> uh, I remember people kind of seeing this as maybe a seed to precipitate an eventual showdown between Luffy and Shanks. I talked about this in my What Do I Think the One Piece Is video, um, but in the, the spirit that we were just discussing of, like, One Piece just gives you everything. It gives you everything you could possibly want. Uh, I do think eventually we will see some sort of duel or battle, you know, obviously not trying to kill each other, but some conflict between Luffy and Shanks. Uh, so I don't think this is what leads to it, though. I think this is going to get resolved here. My friends will be subject to danger. Sorry for what I've done. Wow. Such humility. From Bartholomew. This is a bottle of deadly poison. You need to make... So this is like a loyalty test. This is definitely like a loyalty test. Shanks is trying to suss out if Luffy has a bunch of scallywags underneath him. Maybe a little concerned about how uh, Squad, the spider Squad, was so easily tricked into betraying Whitebeard. Uh, he similarly wants to see would Bartholomew ever be willing to betray Luffy. Yeah, he drinks it himself. I'm okay with that. Didn't give us no permission for the ritual clubs we drank from the fight we used. Thank God. Nothing to do with him. Please don't tell him I did this. Don't taste a single precious second of his time and the likes of me. Hmm. Wow, wow. But yeah, there's no way it's poison. Sure wish I could have seen Mr. Luffy become the king of pirates. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so the relationship between Shanks and Luffy, I think, is not known at all, really, to anybody besides, you know, those in their inner circle. So yeah, none of this must have made any sense to him, but it uh, made sense to me. Very good, very good. I like this. Ah, but, hey, so this is happening, like, right now. Because it's saying one month ago is when the flag got burned, and then right now is when Shanks is testing him. So I don't think Shanks is the one on Raftel. No, 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 no. I think this disqualifies Shanks as being the one that's on Raftel. Right? I think so. Okay. Means they feel good knowing how much they care for Luffy. Oh. Interesting, interesting. Hmm, so even though they are happy that Luffy has strong allies, loyal allies, they still blow up the ship. See, this is kind of interesting. They're still maintaining a little bit of an edge with Shanks. You know, he's a friend, he's an ally. But uh, he's, he's not a trifling fellow. He's not a cuddly teddy bear. Um, or at least, you know, it seems like he's a little surprised that Yasop steps up and does this. It's unclear whether he, like, approves or not. But uh, Yasop sure does it. <laughs> Would his son do a similar thing? I don't know. But yeah, it seems like a kind of common theme we're getting at the start of this final Ultimate Saga is uh, a lot of pirate captains are getting gapped. They're getting absolutely canyoned, in fact, by these emperors. And I think it's just set up to, A, reinforce how crazy strong these emperors are and to understand what that position means, which is good. That's good table setting because this, you know, final saga is going to be largely about the conflicts between them. And at the same time, it reduces our relevant character count <laughs> to, to more and more of a manageable level. Because uh, when these big final climactic showdowns happen, when these wars I'm anticipating between every good guy and every bad guy uh, start to unfold, there still is an upper cap on how many characters Oda can like kind of meaningly, meaningfully present in those, those scenes. You know? It's too chaotic if you have every single character that's appeared throughout the series and you're trying to show every little impact they're having. I'd say the Whitebeard War was pretty damn peak in that it had so many characters and yet you could still really track the causality of action, a sense of time and space to how everything was unfolding, uh, a really good feeling of everything impacting one another but still having space to highlight individual actions and everybody's little individual arcs that was peak excellent excellent uh i don't know if you can do that if you like double the size of each army double the amount of, of relevant characters involved so yeah i think uh i think we're going to be seeing more scenes like this <laughs> where guys just get blown the fuck up and then may not uh cont contribute all that much after that Okay, so, we're back to Full Lead Island, where Garp rampaged uh, valiantly, perhaps in vain. But the whole world is about to get in the act. Pony Ghost ain't the knowledge of the underworld anymore. With the full-scale scramble for the stones, even the government and navy are getting involved. Can't win if you don't take him seriously. The key piece to all that is Kobe, so how'd you get him? let him get away? Why is Kobe the piece... Huh? Why Kobe? Does he know something? Does he know something about the location of the final Poneglyph? Something like that? Interesting, interesting. We also let Moria get away! <laughs> and I love this. San Juan Wolf trying to rebuild the town. Okay, okay. Well, sky high. Oh, this is so cool, dude. The Blackbeard Pirates are so cool. They're so piratey. Caught Garp instead. It's an upgrade in the end. To be honest, I thought I killed him, but he ended up alive instead. Wow. It's all chained up. Poor Garp. 
but he's still alive. We'll still get more Garp action eventually. Wins in our favor now. The three-eyed girl on top of that. Oh yeah, Lafitte. Lafitte seems to be kind of their roaming scout. Uh, this strange force that just acts semi-independently and, and rounds up knowledge and kidnaps and schemes and manipulates. Ah, see, exactly. He right now is spying on the revolutionaries. Interesting, interesting. Quite serious about attacking provisions. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Trying to stop things from going up to the top of the red line. Don't seem to work at all when they actually have food on board. Yeah, yeah. If any of those close to the dragons actually starving, be living in really unprecedented times. I love it. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, it seems like this is quite interesting because it really is like three factions right now. Uh, obviously, you can break it down into even more factions than that. But generally speaking, we have pirates that Luffy can abstinably get along with and pirates that he definitely can't. And then the world government, right? Uh, and it's it's unclear, though, even though Blackbeard is kind of the sworn enemy of Luffy, does he have beef with the revolutionaries? Does he care? Does he think that's kind of based and cool? It's his, his politics are definitely a lot more, like, egoistic and selfish. He just kind of wants his own power and control. But the revolutionaries could be, like, a very, very helpful stepping stone for him in seizing power, because they are very, very effectively just wiping out massive power sources of the government. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Their big raft ship. Very upgraded. Devon sailing back. The Crescent Moon Hunter. Pizarro picking it up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they got uh, frickin' Karabu over here. Who has... Knowledge, of course, that he picked up from spying constantly for, like, several arcs in a row. <laughs> Two days have passed since leaving Egghead, and even the giant pirate ship the Great Eric has yet to le reach Albath. For a very particular reason. The Sunny is gone. What the hell? What the hell? Huh? Oh, now this is fascinating. She wakes up in Legoland. Uh, so... This... I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> uh, it could be Sugar from Dressrosa has the toy toy fruit power. Uh, but I, I don't think so. I don't... That doesn't seem right. I, I, I think this will be a new thing. What the hell it is? I have no clue. It's been quite a while since we've had a chapter ending that's just this baffling. Um, so we're, we'll look forward to that. Look forward to next week. A new arc is starting. I'm confident in that. Is it the Elbaf arc? I don't know. <laughs> They're certainly not on Elbaf. Um, but like, what, what the hell's going on, dude? What the hell is going on? Uh, I don't know. This is what I'm telling you. I, Oda will never, ever do what people think. <laughs> uh, when I outlined all the stuff that I thought could happen in this chapter, the idea of Nami blacking out and waking up in a world made out of Lego was not even close to the list. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. See you next week.